Joan Clepper and Laura Gray! Yeah, give it up. What I like about people. So, uh, in the spirit of spring cleaning, uh, spring cleaning can imply uh, airing one's dirty laundry. So, uh, we thought that we would tell the story, uh, true, depending on who you ask, recounts of how Margaret and I first became friends. Uh, yeah, so we, we thought it would be an entertaining thing. Air some of our dirty laundry. Exactly. Uh, when we met, I had a really big crush on Steve. Yeah. Aww. I know, yeah. Uh, when I met Margaret, I was working at Time Out Chicago. I was the comedy editor, and it was the first job that I had that the mean age was below 50. So I was really excited. I think I was, we were like 25 at the time. We were 24. 24. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was so important. Uh, and like, I was just really excited to have a friend at work because all the people that I had worked with before were so much older than I was and were jacking up my insurance premiums. And I was excited to have a friend who was my age. It's really awesome. Uh... I had had pretty cool jobs before that, so I was like, <laughs> I need a work crush. Um, and so the way I demonstrated my crush on Steve was that I asked him to hang out all the time. And I had been working at Time Out for like a year and change before Steve started, so I was like, oh, come to this party with like all these work people. And, uh, and I thought I'd be able to entice him with like all the cool, sexy ways that I knew all this gossip about work. <laughs> It's true, because I remember thinking, like, whoa, she knows a lot of gossip. I'm one of the, the crew. Like, I'm in. I'm excited to just be part of this team and to have, finally, to have, like, a real work friend. That was so important to me. I was excited to finally have a work crush who didn't seem like a crazy person. Um, so I was like, oh, this is by far my sanest work crush. I, we got to know each other, and the I was like... Are, the key is sanest. <laughs> like... Okay, I'll, uh, you know, I'll take Sanest. Work Crush 1.0 at Time Out Chicago turned out to have a serious coke addiction and periodically goes on five-day benders. <laughs> so Steve is definitely saner than yeah, him. Yeah, four day. <laughs> four day. <laughs> anyway, we sort of struck up this friendship, although in my head it was like a prelude to a romance. And, um, and then there was the show at the Metro. That's true, that's true. Uh... Yeah, so the show at the Metro, I'm trying to remember, I think it was like a, pr a, a Pitchfork Festival pre-party, and I had two tickets because I was the comedy uh, editor, I had these two tickets to the show, and it was the day before Margaret's birthday, and I thought, what better way to show appreciation for my new work friend than to send her an email that it was like, hey, I would have these two tickets, and you should come with me to the show. I think that that's, it's basically the way that it worked out. But, uh... Yeah, I was also feeling a little weird because every time we had hung out, uh, up until that point, it was always like we'd go out with the work friends, and then we would be like, Margo would be like, oh, you want to have another drink? I'm like, yeah, sure, this would be great. And then I'd be like, all right, time to go. And she'd be like, really, you want to go? And I'd be like, yeah, i got to get up. And she'd just be like, okay, bye, and just immediately leave. <laughs> and I felt really terrible. I felt like I had done something wrong. So I thought that this show would be like my, my show of appreciation of like the friendship that I was getting. And I thought the show was like a date. <laughs> I know, and uh, I didn't realize that. I was like completely naive to this. So we go to the show, and I thought it was, I thought it was fun. I thought it was a fun show. You know, like I was just like a normal person, you know, hanging out with another person. Uh, and after the show, I think something similar happened where it was like, oh, you want to get another drink? And I said like, no, I gotta get up for something. And she's like, okay, bye. And she left. And I felt terrible again. I felt like I had done something wrong. And, uh, yeah, I just felt really bad, I remember. <laughs> I remember that the next day was my birthday party, and I had told my best friend, like, well, I got a date the night before. So I hope he comes to the party. Like, she hadn't met him yet. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to be there. And what's awesome is that, like, we'll have gone on this date the night before, so it's going to be amazing. That's, like, a true strategy. <laughs> I, like, well done at the age of 24, or soon to be 25. That was pretty good. Actually, I think we were turning 24, because I looked it up in my Gmails yesterday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we were, like, prodigies, like, social prodigies. <laughs> What's amazing is also, like, how wise we thought we were. 
was just like, oh my god, I can't I believe this was my plan. But it was. It was totally my plan. This was completely my plan. And I was like super naive to this whole thing. So I go to the birthday party, and I'm like hanging out with other Time Out Chicago people, and I'm like, I'm in. Like, I'm in. This is great. I'd only been working there for like a month and a half, I think, at that point. I was just excited to be there. And... Uh, I stayed for a while. It was at this bar called the Happy Village in Chicago, and they have a ping pong table. So I was playing ping pong for a while, showing off my uh, ping pong prowess as I usually do. And uh, at the end of the night, Margaret came up to me, and she was like, "I'm leaving. Was last night a date?" And I said, N "No." I was really surprised. I was taken back. I was like, "No, it wasn't because I." <laughs> think of you as, like, a work friend. I'm really sorry. And then she said, well, if it was a date, it was the worst date I've ever had. <laughs> to which I replied, well, when I take girls on dates, <laughs> they know. Which sounds, it like, it sound, like, I'm making it sound cooler than it, than it really was, and it was already really lame. <laughs> also, like, they know. Like, that's such a fake praise for myself that I gave. I vehemently deny that that happened. It totally happened. It's like I, seared in my brain. I completely deny that this happened. One, because I was very drunk at the end of that night and was no way clever enough to come back with that line. Two... I discovered that I still have the ticket stub from that show, so I don't think I would have hung on to it for this long if it had actually been the worst date. And three, um... I legitimately did not know. <laughs> three, I have been on a date with someone who burped in my mouth while we were kissing. <laughs> and then denied that it had happened. <laughs> so my barometer for a worst date is like... Like, that's a either really high or really low bar. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I merely belched. <laughs> anyway, the point was that I felt terrible. I felt terrible, as I usually do. I was like, my work friendship is over. I am now not part of the Time Out crew. I no longer will have any friends at work. I have ruined any chance I ever have of ever making friends at my office. And I felt really bad. And I didn't think we would ever hang out again. <laughs> yeah. I um, scraped my ego off the floor and <laughs> tried to remind myself that um, as good of friends we were, that, that probably ultimately the sexual chemistry was never going to fully materialize because at the time you were very into your pair of Israeli Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> True. They're actually called Naots. They're actually better. They're like better quality Birkenstocks. When you buy them, you don't think that they could be better quality. They're actually cheaper because you buy them using the Israeli dollar. Um, so they were very comfortable. Uh, but I stopped wearing Birkenstocks. And, uh, and I stopped having a crush on Steve. And obviously, like, it worked out. Like, we're here. It's like, true. a lot of the reasons why I'm in Brooklyn is because of Margaret. She moved here first. She showed me a lot of cool places here. And now I'm here. I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, Margaret, do you remember that night that we, uh, that one of our friends had his birthday and we tried to get him a dominatrix? It was a really good night, you guys. It was a great night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take it, stuff. I have no idea. I know. I couldn't believe it, but I actually still have it. Um, <laughs>